Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome you to Greater Twin African Methodist Episcopal Church, located here at 13501 Rosa Park Boulevard in Detroit, Michigan. And on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Robert Blake, and our associate ministers, Reverend Dr. Laura Foster and Reverend Deborah Elliott, and all the members of the Greater, we welcome you to our virtual worship service. Um, here are a few of our announcements. Um, we ask that everyone join us. You're all invited to our daily hour of prayer. We like to call it happy hour or the power hour, but we are asking all of you to come and join us as we corporately pray. And the phone number is 313-246-9552. Again, that's 313-246-9552. Likewise, we ask that you please join us each and every Wednesday for our Bible study. Well, this one, I think, will be our last one for the summer, this particular Wednesday. And it is it's at 10.30 and or 6.30 p.m. But this um, Wednesday, we will be having a love feast uh, at 6.30 and Bible study will immediately follow. So we will be having a love feast this Wednesday at 6.30 and it's going to be on the Zoom Bible study, uh, same ID number uh, that we use for Bible study. That would be 861-3619-8112. Again, that number is 861-3619-8112. And if you desire to call in instead of getting in on the, uh, over the Zoom, it's 312-626-6799. Again, that's 312-626-6799. Also, anyone who desires to connect with uh, us here at Greater Queen, you can do so by texting. And you text it to GQC. No, you text GQC, excuse me. And the number you text it to is 84576. Again, you text GQC and... The number is 84576. You can also find these and any of our other announcements at on www.greaterqueenalme.org. And we will now have prayer from our Reverend Dr. Lauren Foster. Amen. Hallelujah. Actually, they will be good 
Hallelujah. Because God is on our side. Amen. We will be yeah, good yeah. because God yeah, is on our side. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Um, I still, it's, that was the inspiration. Amen. Father, you are always working for my good. You all ask that I follow for your purpose. You have set out of my life. How can I go wrong with that? You only want what is best for me. I love you for that. Thank you, Lord. And again, amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Foster, for that prayer. Amen. Uh, I'll be doing the scripture reading today, and I'll be reading uh, out of Luke, the 24th chapter, and I'll be reading from verses 36 to 49. That's Luke 24, 36 to 49, and I'll be reading out of the King James Version. And it's and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened, and supported that they had seen the Spirit, and supposed that they had seen the Spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that, is, that it is myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see, as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while yet they not believed for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have you any meat? And they gave him a piece of a boiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written into the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the psalm concerning me. They opened, they opened he their understanding, and they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that, and that repentance and remission of the sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until, until ye be endured with the power of on high. I pray that the Lord add his blessings to the reading, the hearing, and application of his holy word. Amen. 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 Oh, excuse me. We will now have a selection from our, our musical department. Amen. Praise God. Oh! 
fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we would walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, that we would be fruitful in every good work and steadily grow and increase in the knowledge of you. Oh, God, give us minds to conceive, hearts to believe, ears to receive the spoken word of God. Grant us accuracy in preaching, teaching, and speaking, oh God. And grant us accuracy in hearing. Heavenly Father, come on now, take the scales of blindness off these eyes, that God, we might see what you know and know what you see. Yeah. Now, Father, not unto us, not unto us, but unto your name, give glory for your mercy and your true sake. In the precious name of Jesus, every heart and greeting said, yes. Yes. yes, thank you, thank you. and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, praise for a few moments, I'm going to speak to you from the subject, let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, 1901, 1906, 1914, we saw a shift in the religious front of America. Topeka, Kansas, Houston, Texas, other places in the Midwest experienced the outpouring of the Spirit of God, the outpouring upon them in a way that had never been seen before in this country. Word spread because people were seeking the Spirit of God. They knew there was more and they wanted more. They were crying out, God, I want more. By 1906, there was an outpouring in Los Angeles. Amen where God moved on those who were seeking him, who were asking for such the outcome. Ah. Charles Fox Parham, William J. Seymour, sought more from God and got it. We, we don't see more. Amen. Who had taken over a Methodist building in an area and transformed it to Holy Ghost headquarters? Uh, the, the evidence of speaking in tongues, amen, came on the scene as partial evidence. To those who had been filled by the Spirit of God. By 1914, the Assemblies of God, Pentecostal, and what was termed Holiness Church, or the Church of God, came into existence, even though, watch this, the Methodists were always the originators of holiness. They are the first church. Amen. Of holiness. Persons have always wanted more, and so in the 60s and the 70s, 70s neo charismatics emerged out of classical and traditional churches to create their own space. It has always been in the heart of man and the very soul of man that he receives more than what he knows and than what he has. It's always been important to him. We, we seek something that, that, that we reach for. We know it's there. We can't see it, but we know it's there. There's something on the inside of us that suggests there's more than what we see or what we know. 
Uh, we'll put this, with the deal Pentecostal folk, uh, there was this emphasis on, of course, speaking in tongues. There was this emphasis on uh, practicing the spiritual gifts that God gave to humankind through the power and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm cautious in what I say in this moment. Because this wasn't blank, but I need you to hear this. If the church is going to fulfill the commission it's been given, if the church plans to move forward in ministry of Christ, if there is a desire to be effective and really reach the lost, save souls, Heal the sick, see the miraculous, bring deliverance. If we have a desire to see this manifested again, watch the churches have to travel backwards to recapture the fire. Watch and fall in love with Him again who is the Holy Spirit. God said to move forward, you got to go back. To move forward, you have to go back. So, so what does that mean, go back? Go back to what? Go back to who? Watch as society traverses in this digital revolution and the information age, having more and knowing more, moving forward technologically at an incredible rate of speed, the church seeks to keep up, watch, and it falls behind in its assignment. What's our assignment? Now, here's our assignment, our, our dinners, here's our assignment. Our car watches is our assignment. Those things. It's our assignment, those programs. Because many of the programs and many of the things we do is for us. But we rarely invite the lost to what we're doing. Come on, y'all. Our assignment. What is our assignment? Our assignment brings the lost to Christ. Who are we supposed to go back to? What are we supposed to go back to? We're supposed to go back to the one who empowers us to get it accomplished. We've got to start believing again. Watch that which was promised to us. Ah. Uh, the prophetic promises from the gospel writers suggested in Matthew, the third chapter, the 11th verse, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In Mark, the first chapter, the seventh and eighth verses, and he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandals step I am not worthy to stoop down and to loose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In Luke, the third chapter, the sixteenth verse, there's an agreement here. John, hallelujah. John answered, saying, You all indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I is coming, uh, whose sandal step I am not, hey, who worthy to lose? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John didn't want to be a left out, uh, but he infers in this, John the first chapter, the 26 to 27 verses, John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who coming after me is referred before me who sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. Prophetic utterance from the writer suggests to us 
Hallelujah, that we're supposed to get ready for something, who, someone who was coming, hallelujah, who would change our lives, change our minds, change our directions, change everything about us. Luke, the 24th chapter, the 49th verse says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And then in the Living Bible, it says in Acts, the first chapter, and the eighth verse, listen, but when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power to testify about me with great effect to the people in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and into the ends of the earth about my death and my resurrection. That's the first chapter, the eighth verse of the Amplified Classic Version. But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. Go back to who? Go back to what? Go back to the Holy Spirit. I can't stand it. Go back to the Holy Ghost. My God in heaven. Who is he? What does he do? Why do we need to go back to him? Can we teach for a moment? He is the one. One of the Trinity, meaning three. Trinity meaning three. The Holy Spirit is the divine principle of activity everywhere and work in the world. Watch this. Executing the will of God. He does what God says. He does what God requires. He does what God demands. He is revealed as sharing the work of creation and the work of regeneration. So when we talk about the when we talk about being born again, we talked about it this week. It is the job of the Holy Spirit that gets on the inside of you when you say yes and makes it happen. Watch automatically. All he needs is your will, y'all. It ain't gonna be about your feeling all the time. Just know that the work of the Holy Spirit is to regenerate and to transform you into something that you've never been before. That ought to make somebody happy today. The work of transformation is done by him. He is the change agent for humanity. Watch. He is omnipotent. My mind, meaning he, he is powerful. Meaning he rules and he reigns. Watch. He is omnipresent. Sent by Jesus. Given by God. It was really crazy. I, I, I saw something this week in, in, in the Word of God, and it kind of put me away because I didn't think about it, but in the Gospel according to Luke, amen, uh, when Jesus had, uh, amen, been crucified, and, and the two men from Emmaus, they were walking back to Emmaus, amen, they were walking home, and, and somebody joins them, amen, right on the road and begins to talk with them and have a conversation with them. Amen. And he began to minister to them the word of God. Amen. Because they said, well, don't you know what happened? And he really knew what was happening, but Jesus didn't say who he was or what was going on. But he begins to minister to word the word to them. Amen. And the Bible says uh, they walked so long that when he came the evening, uh, they bid him to come in. Uh, amen. To have a supper. Uh, amen. To have a meal with them. Uh, they sat at the table. Uh, and the Bible says Jesus broke bread. Uh, and the Bible says their eyes were open. Uh, and all of a sudden they knew who they were sitting with. But the word of God says that watch this. Jesus disappeared from their eyes. Uh, but in the next moment, the word of God says that he ends up, hallelujah, right in the midst of the disciples who were in hiding. He is our deep presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He could be everywhere at once. It'd be your home and my home all at the same time. Ministry of the things of God. Watch. He is the source of physical and intellectual 
capabilities. You know the Sunday school stories. How he ruled in Samson. You understand the Sunday school stories. Amen. How he endowed men with wisdom and gifts to build the temple of God. Amen. Artisans. Men working with metal. Men working with tapestry. Men working with colors. It was the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon them and endowed them with this power, with these gifts to do what God wanted done. He's a source of physical and intellectual capabilities. He manifests supernatural signs. He gives gifts. He abides with the people of God, giving power for the work of the kingdom of God. He gives instruction. Hallelujah. When the church fails to receive instruction, believe you me, we are on dangerous ground. Uh, unfortunately, we stop receiving instruction. Uh, unfortunately, we stop believing the promise that was given to us. Uh, look again at Acts, the first chapter, and the eighth verse. But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But the church has moved past the promise. The church has moved and started walking after its own beat. God was moving us in a place in the first century church that there was respect because of the power of what was being demonstrated. And yet through time, hallelujah, time has a way of changing things. Time has a way of changing folk. Time has a way of changing situations and circumstances. And just believe me, you remember back in 2014 uh, when it flooded like this before. Uh, hallelujah, some homes were still flooded. Uh, but through time, the water receded. Through time, uh, things got dry again. Through time, uh, there was a change and there was a difference. Uh, time is good. Uh, on one hand, but on the other hand, uh, if it's not bound up uh, and wrapped up in the things of God, uh, we can move away uh, from the things of God. Uh, we moved away uh, from the things of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit uh, became a We need to go back 
Because if we go back, we'll find that there's one, hallelujah, who came to meet every need in our life. John tells us about the Holy Ghost. In the 14th chapter, he tells us about the Spirit of the living God. Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. He'll give you a counselor. He'll give you a helper. He'll give you an intercessor. He'll give you an advocate. He'll give you a strengthener. He'll give you one that stands by. If you go back, your help is here. Hallelujah. Some are praying, Lord, help me. But if you go back, guess what? Help is on the way. If you go back, all that you need, God has given. He ain't changed his mind. He ain't lost a step. But he wants us to go back and get what we got. Hallelujah. A long time ago.
Je veux les gens de cancer. Look at how well choir sings. And look at how well preacher preaches. Humankind has always been and will always be moved by the power of the living God showing up in their lives. Okay, how many programs you have? Slash you and give you that bad news, and you start freaking out and you start crying, oh my, what am I going to do? As opposed to responding with the word of God. Yes, yes. But that's where we are now. That's right. So much bad news, and how do we respond? Oh. That's how we respond. Oh. We never address it with the word. We just go, oh. We start tripping, we start freaking out. Oh. How did they respond in the book of Acts? We need to go back. It is the word of the Lord for today. We need to go back. I challenge you. I challenge me. Go back. Go back to the place of power. Go back to the place of wisdom. Go back to the place of knowledge. Go back to the place of righteousness. Go back to the place of, place of justice. Go back to the place of sanctification. Go back to the place of holiness. Go back. Go back to being who we call you to be. Go back. Start talking about him again. Start lifting him again. Start desiring him again. The word of God has always remained true. He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. That's a promise of God. Amen. Go back. Don't, 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 don't let the world fool you. Go back. I hate how folk don't respect the church anymore. No power. Go back. We don't both don't respect the church anymore. No presence. Go back. Oh well, you know the church. Nobody respects the church anymore. No position. Go back. Go back to where? To walk in the door. And the presence of God greets you and says, hello. If you don't know him this afternoon, if you lost touch with him, if you never really knew anything about the Holy Spirit, we invite you this afternoon to know him. We invite you to fall in love with him and for some to fall in love again. Fall in love again. Fall in love with Jesus all over again. Fall in love with you. Want and desire all that he has for you. Fall in love again. Go back to me. Hallelujah. And if you fall in love with him, if you fall in love all over again, I believe it's the best be you ever you'll ever do. How do I do? Come on, just say yes to him today. Just say, Lord, here I am. I want more, I need more. I want you. If you just say this simple prayer and mean it from your heart, just say, Lord Jesus, come to my mind. I want you, I hunger for you, I need you. Forgive me my sin. Wash me. Heal me. Deliver me. I need you right now. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the reality is to have to say a lot of things, but what you say.
carry in your heart, he already heard. He can feel the love. He can feel the love. Rejoice. Rejoice that he loves you so very much. And he gave the very best that he can to Come on. Celebrate what you just said. Celebrate what you just done. Just know that you came to him, he won't cast you away. Hallelujah. You'll never come short of his word. God bless you, God keep you. Call somebody, tell somebody what you just did. Hallelujah. Tell what you just did. Say, I just either committed, recommitted, I got hungry all over again. I'm going back. I'm falling in love. God, that you can do exceedingly, 
and the abundantly above all we could have asked to say, you are a God that's more than enough. So I will thank you this week, God. You're more than enough deliverance. You're more than enough healing. You're more than enough resource that we need. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are more than enough. So we bless you for that today, God. We thank you today. We celebrate you, Father, in our lives. Thank you for changing. In Jesus' name. You say, yes, God. You say, thank you, O oh God. You say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hang on to this. For the name of Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. You hang on to that. When the winds start blowing and the waves pick up, Hallelujah, the ship of your life. Hallelujah, don't you catch your anchor. Yeah. That's why we don't end, we don't end like we did. Yeah. Catch your anchor. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And you say, you're the best thing. You're the best thing. You're the best thing. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, I pray for all of you that the Lord will wash you with his word. You will see by his spirit. He will baptize you with fire and feed with the Holy Spirit. He will anoint you with power. He will feed his love. That was an angel of Satan to touch you with around all of us. And all of us are covered with the blood. That's our prayer for you in Jesus' name. Until next week, if the Lord says so, be here. Same time.